I think it's always good when you can go out and get a win against a quality opponent. You, they had them picked um, third in the conference. So we knew they were going to come in and try to out-tough us. And, you know, when everything's not clicking, you just have to find a way to win. Sometimes will yourself um, to your destiny, if you, uh, if you will. So I think that was big for us, just kind of finding a way, coming in, regrouping at halftime, and just making a decision to do whatever we could to win the game. And then looking ahead, big, big matchup with CSU Pueblo this weekend. What can you tell me about that matchup? Uh, it, 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 it's always a big one for us because it's the next one. So I think uh, we, play, we play Mesa every week in some form or entity because it's always about us. Um, you know, they have a, a well-established program. Uh, Coach Briston has done a great job there. They play a physical brand of football. So uh, I think we'll have to be clicking on all cylinders and uh, match their physicality, but excited to get to Pueblo and the Thunder Bowl and uh, see where the chips fall. And for you and the defensive line, what's up? You guys have had a really unique group this year. You guys have done a really good job these first three games. What's kind of been the, the, the biggest thing for you guys that, that you've been able to do these first three games that's really carried the, that unit of the defense? Uh, I really think it's something that just starts in practice every day. We know that uh, every day in practice that we have to get put something in the piggy bank uh, to hang our hat on for the end of the week that we, we know that we're prepared. Uh, so I really just think it starts in practice and the way that we practice and how we carry each other uh, through practice. Questions? So, Dorn, obviously the way you guys, you want to do physical, and you've got to get to the quarterback, you've got to get a good rush because you do play so many teams that throw the ball. Mm -hmm. And the Pueblo in the past has been a really run heavy. It looks like they're a little more 50-50 this year. Mm -hmm. What's the Uh, I think it's really just going to come down to technique. Every day in practice, we do uh, a bunch of drills that gives us the opportunity to recognize different blocks. So different blocks is going to tell us what type of uh, play it's going to be, whether it's going to be run or pass. And whenever it's pass, it's time to go. And whenever it's run, we have to stop the run. Would you rather play a running team or a passing team? Passing. <laughs> <laughs> passing. And why? Why? You, you want to get the more of a rush guy? Or? Mm-hmm. Well, sacks is where the money is made on defensive line. You can stop the run. Stopping the run is our number one priority, but sacks is where the money is made. Coach, you've seen these guys at home now on the road. Does the road and the home win help now that they get another trip? Obviously, this one's not as long, but. Um, I think anytime you go on the road, uh, your routine changes a little, and it, that's where maturity comes in. Um, I think we have a well-experienced group. So as far as traveling, they've done a, a great job of traveling and staying the course. Um, so home or away, I think the product is the product. And the main thing is the main thing. When they spot the ball, the mask got to go. Can we talk to some of the, the guys last week that Savage got the ball on the 24 yard line, first down. And, and they're like, hey, wherever they, you know, wherever they line up is where they line up. Um, I think um, from the moment we stepped on campus, we made an emphasis on defense. You could spot the ball on the half yard line or in the parking lot when there's 11 people out there and they got a football on it, then we got a line up to play defense. And that's kind of the, the 212 way. Doesn't matter where the ball is, what the score is, it's us versus them. And it's just kind of, it started in. When we got here off season, got a season under our belt, so now it's just kind of the culture. So we get on the bus to play defense, so defense will play. Yeah, and, and early, uh, the last two weeks, you've given up yards. You know, Highlands, everybody gave up points, but <laughs> you don't give up a lot of points. Are, are you okay with, with that as long as you keep them out, or you want? Um, we're going to get greedy now. And I wouldn't call it greedy. I think for us, uh, we always want to be the aggressor. So in football tournaments, we don't like to bend. As they're saying, bend, but don't break. That's not how we play um, defense here at Mesa. We're all, we always want to attack. So whether it's points or yards, uh, I think there's always a goal to improve upon. So limiting scores and kind of getting that yardage total down has been a big emphasis. And you know, just selling out to the 212 was kind of what we preached last week. Sell out to one another, 
and those guys that you've uh, been through the offseason and everything with. Coach, you mentioned, mentioned matching and physicality. Can you talk about how nasty they are? I, I know that's a kind of a mean team, but you guys have a pretty mean D-line, too. Uh, you, you guys swarm the ball pretty good. What, what does that mean to you, matching physicality? Um, I think anytime you you go into a big game, it's going to be come down to the team that controls the line of scrimmage, um, offense and defensive line. So when I speak about physicality, it's not just necessarily their offensive line. They got a pretty nasty defensive line as well. Um, but it, it kind of goes back to the old saying, if you can run the ball, you always got a chance. And they have been predominantly run heavy in the past, which there's a, they're a little more balanced just because of some of the situations they were in this year. But we know they'll line up and they want to run the ball. So. Um, for us, we got to be the most physical team. You mentioned too that they go 50-50, right? Is that just kind of the nature of the r Mac this year that yeah, everybody's kind of going a little bit more balanced attack? Um, I wouldn't say that. Um, I would say it's kind of, you know, they started out with two, uh, two heavyweight fights uh, early on. So, you know, and they got in some situations in those games and kind of had to dig themselves out of some holes, which they did. Um, I think they have two quarterbacks that could – that they can play, they can both play, if we're being honest. Um, so they, they have some options there, and one is more of a pass first guy, the other one's a run first guy. So that, that's kind of what it comes down to for them. Right, you as a player, Coach mentioned it's always against the Mason Mavericks, but this is a rivalry game that we're talking about too. Is there a different mm -hmm. feeling in the locker room for you guys? I think it is for some, but I also think that we have a lot of transfers. So we've kind of had to uh, learn what it is to play teams like Pueblo uh, and what that means for the program. But I do think that we know that uh, it is a, a big game, not because it's Pueblo, but it is the next game uh, on our path towards what we uh, deem as our destiny. So I think it's different. I think that we're ready to work and put in the work this week to do what we need to do on Saturday. Kind of a similar question to that. You mentioned, you know, just working every day in practice is kind of what you guys pride yourselves on. Mm -hmm. And the depth of this year has kind of been like a recurring headline, I guess we call it. Does that help you guys in practice? Or? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it necessarily helps us because uh, when it's time to go, we go. So, I mean, it's, I guess it's a little bit of break, but I, I think it definitely helps on Saturdays. So practice, I'm, I'm not too sure it helps us. <laughs> <laughs> they don't let you go on and just kind of sit around and <laughs> you, you mentioned with so many transfers and all, and we talked a little bit about the game last weekend about you know, kind of how this team has really figured out a way to, to gel fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. But you are kind of learning about rivalries and, and what some of the history of the program is. And, and for a lot of the, the coaching staff is too, because most of these teams didn't play last year. Right. Is there somebody that, that kind of teaches you that or you, everybody just kind of goes in and everybody's going to be a rival from here on out? Well, we set out to do the same thing every week and I, I think we prepare the same way for every team. Uh, but as far as like rivalries and history goes, I think some of the former the former players here who were here before we got here, they kind of fill us in on who is who and who our rivals are supposed to be and stuff like that. My last question, I know it's only Tuesday. Do you guys kind of feel like you're in a little bit more of a groove now. I feel like now we kind of finally have like two games in a row here. How, how are you guys feeling about for, for a Tuesday, I guess, is the short version? Um, I think for us as coaches, and I'd venture to say for them as players, uh, getting in that routine is probably the, that's when teams start to hit their groove in the season. You know, playing week one, then being off for 16 days, and then coming back, it felt a lot longer than it was. So now we're getting an opportunity to kind of get in that groove and we know what to expect. So I think by us knowing what to expect and they know on Tuesdays we're going to work. So practice day, we're going to work. Wednesday, we'll go full pads. They kind of got the routine. So I think I've mentioned to say come uh, the weekend, we'll be ready to go. Coach, you also mentioned halftime adjustments. That was kind of the theme for the Highlands game, too. Can you talk, obviously, you guys can wait for pick. That's huge in the second half of this game. Can you talk about the halftime adjustments you guys are making? Um, I think for the most part, it's trusting one another because we have coaches in a box and what we're seeing on the field is a little different at times. And 
you don't want to necessarily make um, wholesale adjustments on the sideline because it's a lot of chaos. So actually getting them off the field away from everyone, we can make the um, necessary adjustments and get them to understand exactly what we're trying to accomplish with that. And I think that's something that we've also had to do in practice. So it's carried over well with um, Coach Brown's offense, who they stretch you horizontally and vertically. So you have to make some uh, some adjustments in practice. So. Uh, I think sometimes we can tell on the field, but again, it's hard because you're just doing uh, your job. It's 11 guys that are trying to do their job. So, I mean, obviously, you know, if you mess up on your own job, that's going to be something that's going to have to be adjusted. But uh, going into the locker room, uh, I think it just gives us a better idea because the coach that is coming in is coming from the box. So he's seeing a lot more than we can see. And uh, he can make those adjustments, those adjustments um, that are necessary. Friday to Saturday. <laughs> yeah. All right, questions of the week. All right, this or that. So try to answer as quickly as possible. Don't think about it too much. Halloween or Christmas? That. Christmas. <laughs> My bad. My bad. I thought, I thought Halloween was this. My bad. All I heard was answer as quickly as possible. French fries or onion rings? French fries. fries. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Vanilla. Tidy. Tidy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then last one, would you rather have an intense pain for 10 minutes or a dull pain for one day? Intense pain for 10 minutes. Intense for 10.